Hello and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio. I'm Tim Hayes. I'm your host for the first hour. And today is Wednesday, October 28th, 2020. As always, we're grateful to everyone who's joining us here today, whether you're listening live or listening through the archives, as we spend another couple of hours teaching and supporting people and using some of the most powerful, effective, efficient, and accessible tools I've ever encountered in my 46 plus years of living life and doing therapy. And I'm grateful to say these tools are available absolutely free at whyagain.org. If you go to that website and click on the red and white bullseye or the link in the upper left hand corner of most pages that says start here, it'll take you to a page where you can download chapter 24 of Dr. Michael Rice's book. The book is titled, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? And it's a narrative description in that chapter of the primary tool in this work. That tool is called the Reality Management Worksheet, alternatively called the Reality Management Wake-Up Sheet. And you can read all about it there. You can also, from that same page, download the actual worksheet, a PDF file. You can also download a host of audio files of shows just like this one where people have been stepped through that process or asked questions to clarify the process or given testimonials about how the application of that process has made significant positive improvements in their life. You can also go to your app store and download the completely free and private app if you search for the three words Heartland, H-E-A-R-T-L-A-N-D, all one word, Heartland, Aramaic, A-R-A-M-A-I-C, and forgiveness. By the time you start typing the word forgiveness, you'll see the glowing heart icon and you can Click on that and get access to a completely free and private app that will let you have the seven-step worksheet process, an abbreviated version of that process, and a copy of the Dragon Klingon game, which is a wonderful way to introduce these tools to even younger audiences. And we encourage people to do that soon and often, and then give us a call, our call-in number is 563-999-3581. And if you call that number and press 1, it'll put a little question mark by your phone number, and I'll announce you by your area code, and we can have a conversation. We can have a conversation about these tools. We can have a conversation about the way to apply these tools, the benefit in my life uh, of applying these tools, and... And that benefit just keeps keeps multiplying and amplifying. Um, we were talking yesterday about how right before the Internet show, I read an email that I put a whole series of interpretations on that were less than less than positive, less than loving. And it resonated all kinds of negative emotions in me. And we were talking about, well, several different people had comments or questions. And so it turned into a bit of a dialogue there near the end of the show. And and rather than me doing the worksheet on the show, I entertained some questions about it and talked about how I would apply it. And and then we wrapped up the show with the commitment that I would do some of the worksheet processing about the negative emotions I had generated yesterday. 
And then last night in the support group, we have a support group on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's available through Zoom if you want to join us. The information about that is at mindshiftersacademy.org. And there's two separate pages, one for the login information from Tuesday and one for the login information for Thursdays. And so I did a a worksheet in the support group last night, and then I've done a whole series of them uh, later last night, in the middle of the night, early this morning, before choosing to respond. And the point of the work that we teach in this in our Mind Shifter support group and on this Internet show, the point is that contrary to what my culture teaches me, I'm not angry or hurt or sad or scared because of an email someone wrote me. Even if that email is overtly insulting, even if it's loaded with swear words and uh, accusations and... So what we, what we observe so clearly and fundamentally and repeatedly in this work is that it's the interpretation I choose and then apply to whatever events occur in my life that's responsible for the way I generate the emotions I feel. And, and it's the interpretation that I decide on or choose, depending upon whose vocabulary you want to use, whether it's a, just an automatic reflex response or it's an actual considered choice of many varied options. But it's the interpretation I'm using that holds the thoughts that when I pour enough of my mind energy into those thoughts, that's what generates my emotional state. So when I read an email from somebody who was questioning my credentials and my um, and the validity of my working with a certain client right before the show yesterday, and I generated anger and uh, righteous indignation and um, you know punishment thoughts and. That was all happening inside me and was completely independent of this other therapist writing an email. And I know that because I've been working with these tools for enough years to know that that's the actual dynamic resides within me. And then when I don't like the nature of the anger or the bitterness or the hurt or the resentment, I can pick up the tool. I can start breathing right away. I can use the acupressure points that are available from EFT, the Emotional Freedom Technique. I can make the commitment to keep my breath moving, to feel these energies flowing through me rather than getting all tight and tense and bottling them up. And then I can step into the use of a worksheet. And so we did this last night in the support group. The, the group members supported me in working through a, a worksheet. And we were using the seven-step version of the worksheet, the one from... I don't know, 2017, 2018, something like that. And the worksheet takes the first three steps to help me map out what I'm doing with my conscious logical mind that's actually generating my upset. And I had the name of the therapist who wrote me the email as the trigger. I had myself and the anger, the emotion I was feeling in this one was anger and my uh, Anger level was at an 8 or a 9 out of 10. And what I wrote is what happened is that this other therapist was questioning my integrity and my qualifications. And then the thought I was using to generate anger is that she's being manipulated by her client and it's going to require more work from me. And the punishment thought I had in that worksheet was I just wanted to leave recuse myself from the whole situation.
And the goal that I had for the other therapist was for her to be more professional, more respectful, and more responsive to the needs of the family. Now, in the worksheet process, it understands that if I'm holding on to any goal, no matter how loving, no matter how positively stated it is, if I'm holding on to a goal and I'm feeling a negative emotion at that same time, the emphasis, the focus of my energy on the goal is blocking me from seeing how I'm actually creating my own upset. So the key to this process is to cancel the goal. And when I canceled my goal for this other therapist to be more professional, respectful, and responsive to the needs of the family, and then breathed and asked to be shown the hidden part of my own mind and canceled my need to be right, put my conscious logical mind on the shelf and and just breathed into it, I saw an image of a very, very clear image that happened about 40 years ago. And I was working at a psychiatric hospital and I was working on my doctorate in clinical psychology. So I was I was far more educated and experienced than most of the other people working in that hospital. And I'd, I'd, I'd come to be relied on as a a leader on two or three of the units. But the situation that I flashed on from 40 years ago was one in which I got hooked into something with a patient and I ended up allowing myself to be dissuaded from what I knew would be the right course of action and I did something that was disruptive and disrespectful to the other workers at the time and was probably hurtful to the patient or at least disruptive for the patient. And I was blinded to it and I just carried right through as though everything was fine and it wasn't until a day or two later when I realized the hostility coming at me from coworkers that something was out of whack and when I asked about it, one of them was brave enough to tell me You know, you were a really jerk the other day when you did this. And then and only then did I see how out of line I had been. And I had shame and I had remorse and I had sadness. And that was a very potent memory. I had some tears come up when I remembered it last night in the group and... I made notes about it. I made notes about I can still see the the woman's face from back then who was the one who was brave enough to confront me about my misstep. And I took a breath, and I, I was no longer feeling the anger that I was at the beginning of the worksheet. I was aware of the sadness and the shame that was echoing and reverberating in me from that time 40 years ago. So I breathed and finished up the worksheet by making a commitment to canceling, do a mass canceling of all the times I've ever wanted anybody to be more professional and responsive and respectful. And I left with the, the, the goal to do at least two more worksheets before responding to this other therapist's email. And the interesting thing happened that in the beginning, in the first step or two of the worksheet, it flashed into my mind the thought, you know, maybe I could do a responsibility communication worksheet, which is another tool that's available on whyagain.org. And as soon as I had that thought, another voice in my head said, screw that. You're not doing that. This this person doesn't deserve that. You aren't going to make yourself open like that and a very strong resistance to and it was a part of my mind thought about using that tool and another part of my mind said screw that you're not doing it 
And then at the end of the worksheet process, when I set my goal to do at least two more worksheets before responding to her email, I found myself writing and perhaps responsibility communication with, with you know, um, a little trepidation, but nothing like the vehement refutation of earlier. And I graced, I, I judged my upset level at about a four from like a nine down to a four in that one worksheet process. And so then we breathed a little bit and talked about it and answered some questions from people and then somebody else did a worksheet in the group. And uh, somebody asked me about my worksheet, you know, did I feel like it 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 was worthwhile that it, it did anything and one of the things that I I used as a marker for yes this was a useful worksheet was that my upset level had gone from a 9 out of 10 anger down to about a 4 out of 10 on the anger but I was also introduced to the energy the emotions of sadness and shame So I had more revealed that I could do worksheets on. And then the other marker I used was that I I had the thought, well, maybe I could do a responsibility communication without all of that negativity behind that thought. So then we wrapped up the, the group and went home, and last night I did... A worksheet um, or two and then this morning I did one on um, on waking at 4:30 in the morning wide awake thinking about this thinking about how it really I'm feeling a sense of urgency to get coordinated communication between myself and this other therapist for the benefit of this family and so I did the worksheet on one of the levels of sadness. And so I, Tim, who am love, am feeling sadness. Sadness is what goes in 1B. And 1C is this other therapist again. And what's happening is that she's questioning my experience. And then the thought I was using to generate sadness was that her refusal to make time to talk with me will deprive this family of the help I might offer. And my punishment thought for her was shutting down and blasting her with anger and then shutting down and leaving. So in the worksheet process, then, we reconnect with loving energy and and then set the goal. The goal my mind was telling me that it had to happen was for this other therapist to reach out to me as a professional and work to help this family. So I breathed and I reconnected with love and I got some good loving memories going in my energy system and then I canceled that goal because I know as long as I focus on someone or something outside of me or even focus on changing something inside of me with my conscious logical mind, I will block the flow of insight that might reveal to me the true nature of my upset. So when I canceled that goal, around having this person talk to me, reach out to me as a respectfully as a professional so that we could help this family, I really tapped into some deep sadness that went back to when I was 21 years old. And when I was 21 years old, my family had a mental health crisis. My father had a serious mental health crisis. And the psychiatrist that someone had recommended to me refused to talk to me about it and just said, you've got to lock him up. You've got to get him in the hospital. And I remembered the very, very crushing sensation and myself running up the stairs crying and my mother calling to me from the bottom of the stairs. And I realized in the middle of the stairs, I can't crumble because she needs me. 
he needs me, my dad needs me, and my mom needs me. So there was a lot of sadness, a lot of breathing, a lot of tapping this morning starting at 4.30. And the value in the worksheet is it helps demonstrate to me one more time that the upset, the sadness, the anger, the righteous indignation, whatever it is that I think I'm feeling in this moment because some other therapist is or is not doing what I want them to do, is clearly not the cause of my emotions. So I set the goal to do more worksheets on the issues related to sadness and shame. And, of course, at this point in the morning, I'd only done one on on the sadness. So the next one up was to do one on shame. But um, apparently what I ended up doing was one on anger. And I did it, the worksheet, on the memory of being 21 years old and reaching out to a mental health professional for help with my father and having that person refuse to listen to me and just give me no options but to lock my dad in the hospital. And the thought I was using to generate my anger back then was he won't listen and he won't take the time to work with us. And at the time, my punishment thought was screaming at him. Of course, I I didn't do that on the phone. I did that after I hung up the phone. And my punishment thought for myself was just to shut down. I was in the process of running up the stairs to my bedroom to cry myself into oblivion when my mom stopped me and seeing her, seeing her concern for me was enough to break me out of that spiral and get me focused on doing something productive. So when I had the goal for that person, the goal was to have that psychiatrist at the time work with us and take the time to listen and understand the whole situation. And as I breathed through that, of course, uh, all kinds of emotions were coming up and tears and remembering the feeling helpless and hopeless as a 21-year-old whose father was basically uh, just not there. He was so into his mental health crisis that he was not able to protect himself and he wasn't able to protect my mom and so was my mom, mom and I trying to hold the family together. And it really felt when that psychiatrist had said, no, there's nothing you can do. As a matter of fact, you better hang up right now and call an ambulance, etc." I felt, you know, the crushing weight of being helpless and that my situation was hopeless. So I breathed through that and ended up with a uh, That particular worksheet went from a level four of anger down to a a level six of anger down to a level four of mostly the emotions around feeling helpless and hopeless. So then the next worksheet was on fear. And this was back to the current life situation I have this fear that what this other therapist is doing or not doing is stopping me from being helpful to the family. And the energy of fear was being generated by my thought that I'm going to look incompetent to the person who referred this family to me. So here's a third party clinician who had referred the family to me to do family therapy. And here's an individual therapist who's supposed to be seeing one of the other family members who is the target of the worksheet. So I have a fear, and I'm creating the fear by keep I keep pouring energy into the thought, I'm going to look incompetent to this other 
referring therapist. And my punishment thoughts were to blast anger and indignation, and the punishment thought for myself was just to withdraw, just to shrink away. So the goal I set in that worksheet was for this other therapist to reach out and coordinate with me in a professional manner. And when I canceled that goal and asked to be shown the hidden part of my own mind, I saw, again back to the time when I was 21, my fear of disappointing or looking incompetent to this lifelong friend of my father's who I had reached out to for help in trying to stabilize my father and save his job and you know and this person was so close to us in the family that we called him Uncle Max instead of Mr. So and so. And he was a psychologist and he was one of my father's heroes and good friends and a roommate after college and and I just felt this tremendous pressure to be useful, to perform, to somehow avoid disappointing this person of respect. And so again, you know, the the dynamic that I, my mind is telling me, I'm really worried that I'm going to look inept or ineffective to the person today who referred me this patient. And it's really just an echo of an old download of emotions from when I was 21 years old. So I put that worksheet away with the goal of doing some more worksheets on the shame and the upset and the fear of disappointing people and did another worksheet this time on the shame of how I felt so inept when I did this thing 40 years ago that I mentioned earlier where I had made a misstep as one of the heads of the psychiatric unit for these on this adolescent ward and I'd basically undermined the authority of other co-workers and been out of line and just been blind to it until after the fact and my you know my thought was uh, I'm an idiot I got used by this patient I got manipulated I um, disrespected my fellow workers And so the goal for me in that worksheet was for me to be perfect and professional at all times. And again, I realize if I hold a goal like that and there's any shame in me, if there's any anger, any fear, any upset, the more I focus on the goal, the more I keep myself from having access to the root, the actual cause of that emotion of shame. So I breathed through it and did the meditative release and asked to be shown the hidden part of my own mind that was actually creating this upset. And I saw a whole series of events seem seemingly spinning too quickly for me to get a hold of where I felt inadequate, ranging from grade school through high school and college. And then I breathed and shed some tears and realized I was feeling kind of blank, a little bit more calm, but not really resolved, and agreed to do more worksheets. And then I went to do another worksheet. One of the other worksheets I did was on the righteous indignation that I had because this other therapist, in my opinion, was questioning my integrity and my experience. And the thought I was using to generate that righteous indignation is that she's narrow-minded, and with her being narrow-minded, it's going to hurt this family. So I set up the goal for her 
to see my experience and my value and my integrity and to work with me to help this family. You know, kind of basically to expand her vision from that narrow-minded, prejudging position. And to see my experience, my value, and my integrity, and to work with me to help this family. And so I breathed into that and did the cancellation after tapping into my essence as love and getting that good energy rolling. And I got flooded with a series of times from my college age where I had been narrow-minded and it, it turned out to be disruptive and or ruinous for someone else. At least that was my judgment of it at the time. And I saw a series of those events. And then I made a commitment to do another worksheet on, on myself being narrow-minded because I... I had some specifics I could work on from the college years. And at the end of that worksheet, my upset level had gone from uh, 6 out of 10 righteous indignation down to about a 2. And I was softening the conclusions within me that things have to go differently today than the way they're going now in order for things to be better. And I just, it felt more comfortable breathing into realizing, okay, um, this is a lot of my old stuff getting triggered, and so I'm not really seeing clearly what's going on in the world around me today. So I want to make sure that I breathe and soften and continue to do the worksheets on the upset but when my upset level was down to two after that last worksheet I felt completely comfortable formulating and then calling and leaving a voicemail message for the other therapist answering one or two of her questions in the last email and inviting her to connect with me soon on the phone so we could coordinate um to work with this family. So that's the processing that I had made the commitment to do and share today. And I'm aware that there's still some energy of emotion, although most of the emotion today, most of the tears today are about appreciation and gratitude and 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 relief and and being able to sit with a more solid feeling uh, of myself and of my work and understanding that with a willingness to continue to do the use of these tools, perhaps even the responsibility communication tool, I will do all that I can to contribute to a positive resolution to the communication with this other therapist and to the interaction with this family for whatever therapy I might continue to be involved in. So that's my offering for today. It's We have 24 minutes left. Our call-in number is 5.